Before we go on to the Poisson example, I want to show you a quick trick with the Excel and Megastat. You have our app output from our hypogeometric probability distribution example and normally what will happen is if we run a megastat again it's going to keep adding on keep adding on into the same sheet but if we want to separate these out we can right click on it rename and let's just call it hypergeo output so now we have our hypergeometric distribution output and uh, for the sake of the argument, we'll go to our hypergeometric probability distribution. Poisson doesn't matter which. Let's go ahead and pull up another megastat probability distribution. And we can go in from here. And let's, for the sake of our uh, example, we'll pull up a probability distribution for a binomial probability distribution. So let's go click on binomial. The number of trials that we want, we'll use it from our first example, and that is uh, 0.5, and then our pi, remember they used p, it was 0.2, so we had a 20% probability. And we'll display the graph just for giggles. Now when we hit output, uh, the output now is in this tab called output while the hypergeo output stayed the same. So we have a way that we can keep adding on and now if we wanted to we could go ahead and rename this to binomial um, flights output and then we'd be able to keep that and keep building our in, into separate tabs. It's just another way of organizing your data. Some of you have already figured this out in your homework. So the, for the sake of our uh, Poisson distribution, we now have the uh, uh, example here, assume Northwest Airlines rarely loses baggage. Suppose a random sample of 1,000 flights shows a total of 300 bags were lost. Thus, the arithmetic mean number of lost bags per flight is 0 0.3, 300 out of 1,000. If the number of lost bags per flight follows a Poisson distribution with mu equals 0.3, find the probability of not losing any bags. Now remember that the Poisson distri probability distribution is based on two assumption, assumptions. The first is that the uh, probability is proportional to the length of the interval. So the longer the interval, the larger the probability. And the second assumption is that the intervals are independent. And we've discussed independence before. And that means that the number of the occurrences in one interval does not affect the other intervals. Now this Poisson distribution is also a limiting form of the binomial distribution. When the probability of success is very small and n is large, it's often referred to as the law of improbable events. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and calculate our Poisson probability distribution. So we have our example. Let's look put in the values of what we know. We want to know the mean or the mu, and we have that here. It's 0.3, so we can put in our 0.3. Now E is the constant, 2.71828. Remember, I put the information down here if you've forgotten it or you don't have the book out. And one way to find that in in rather than punching it in manually is if you, you don't even have to think about it is if you just remember that if you type in equal and then x exp now it says returns e raised to the power of a given number okay well what happens when we raise any number to the power of one we get that number so this is our value right here of e so we don't even have to remember the 2.71828 value uh, we just go ahead and can punch it in as an exponent raised to the power of 1. <clears throat> and as we've done before, we have our screenshot here and our translation table. So we want to find out the value of the probability that num the number of bags lost on the flight is 0, or that no bags will be lost on the next flight. So how do we do that? We go ahead and we punch, go into our cell, we type in equals Poisson <clears throat> and again we can type it in here or we'll pull the function button so we can actually see what we're doing 
and we're looking for the value of x, the probability of x in this case is 0. Let's just go ahead and put the reference in right from the start. We know that that's 0 and we're referencing it here. Now the mean or the mu is 0.3 and then do we want it to be cumulative? No, not here we do, do not. So we'll click 0 for false, hit OK and we have our value. I'll unhighlight it for a second. And we can copy the formula down and look how quickly it goes down to zero. But is this truly the probability is equal to zero? No, because if we add a few more decimal points, but this is what we're talking about with it's the law of uh, improbable events, meaning the probability pi of a particular event's happening is quite small and it drops off quite quickly. So you could actually go down to the rest of these here and watch how they disappear, how far you have to expand it out. And we're here out, I don't know how many decimal places, and already you see that there isn't anything showing up for the 12. Uh, okay, so now we want to do the cumulative, same formula, equals Poisson. We'll go ahead and use the function again, just for clarity's sake, we'll put in the zero. Our mean is 0.3, and in this case, we put in the 1, saying that our cumulative is true, or we want it to happen. Bring our formula down, and we have, uh, ah, I didn't use the cell reference. Let's try that one more time. Hey, there we go. But is this truly a probability of 1 at this point? Again, if we add a few more decimal places, we'll see quickly that it's not. So what is the probability that no bags will be lost on the next flight? No bags? Well, we just look reference to our, our table that we did. We've developed our probability distribution table. And that is 0 0.7408. And just for giggles, what if we wanted to know the probability that four bags would be lost? We can look and see that that is 0 0.0003. And I'm not going to go any higher than that. What is the mean of the distribution? We already answered that. So we know that that's 0.3. Now, what is the variance of the distribution? Well, the mean, uh, uh, the variance of the distribution is equal to the mean of the distribution. And then the standard distribution, or the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance.